What strategies exist to overcome adversity? Hi, welcome to the Hello World Show. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach. I'm Heather Downey. And we're here today with Jeff Strauss. He's a Microsoft MVP, international speaker, also a lawyer, software engineer. True. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. So tell us about the transition. You were originally a lawyer, but right. you transitioned to software engineering. Tell us about that. Right, well, I mean, it's a, it's a longish sort of story, but uh, the, uh, the short version is, uh, as a kid, I believed I was going to, like too many people in our industry, I was like, I'm going to write computer games because computer games are cool. <laughs> and um, they've gotten way cooler than they were when we thought they were cool. And uh, I got to college and that all changed. I ended up with a psychology degree and got in, went to law school um, for a variety of reasons. Practiced for several years in transactional law, private practice. And uh, after several years, realized that what I actually wanted all along was a thing that I knew I wanted when I was like a 12-year-old kid. Mm. Uh, it just took me an extra 20 years to get there. Um, so yeah, so I kind of walked away from the practice, uh, went back to school, relearned some fundamentals, got involved uh, speaking in the community, uh, doing a lot of um, you know, consulty type of work. That um, story kind of harkens back to my own. I should have always been a software developer. Right. I, I, I do feel like that. And I also started in a different path. You so have like 300 different skills though that are all amazing. <laughs> right, so. so what makes you continue to stay doing this or in parallel i guess you still kind of study law don't you um so i st so i don't practice law um i i keep my license active and you know some of my talks that i give when i travel to conferences ha are kind of straddle the line between technology and law and business um tomorrow i'm giving a talk on open source licensing and how it how its use uh, how the use of open source in the enterprise can, can impact teams uh, i give talks on intellectual property things like that um, for the most part, though, I mean, my, my, my true passion is uh, kind of I improving life through technology and solving business and real-world problems through technology. So to me, I take a lot of the same, um, the same consulting and legal skills that I had anyway from that, from, from that career and just apply those using a different medium. Instead of using contracts and words, I'm, I'm using code and I'm using C Sharp and JavaScript instead of English a lot of the time, right? But it's, uh, it's really a lot of the same thing. It's using the same skills every day to solve a different kind of problem. Awesome. Nice. We're glad to have you. Thanks so much. All right. All right, Jeff, what are you going to teach us today? So I've been thinking a lot lately about, uh, about adversity. Uh, you know, it's one of these things where everybody tackles it and has to deal with it. But, but uh, it's so relevant, it seems, today you know, in, our, uh, in our industry because we see a conference like this, right? I mean, you all both speak all over the world. And, you know, you, as we go and we, uh, we talk to people, we realize that the landscape of technology changes faster and faster and faster, right? And as that happens, we, we, we get nervous, we freak out, right? And so I've been thinking about it a lot, and one of the things I've started coming to the realization, is just on my own reflection, and on talking to friends who have dealt with kind of difficult situations and things, both personally and professionally, is uh, there are like these tactics, right? There are things that we can do that let us get over these things that are totally insurmountable otherwise, right? So. Here is kind of the thought. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw. I'm, I'm a horrible artist, right? So I'm sorry. But we're going to see what happens. So take, for example, you know, there's a guy. Here's my stick figure. Here he is. He's going for a walk. We're having a good time. He's out for a nice walk. Everything's great. Everything's fine. Right? Stroll in the park. And all of a sudden, one day, mountain <laughs> in his path. It's the worst mountain here. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I can't even accept that. Let's make something that looks more like it's a mountain. Pretend it's a mountain. Okay? Uh, maybe we knew the mountain was coming. Right? Maybe the thought was, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go climb that mountain. Maybe we had no idea. Right? Either way, what happens, right? Suddenly there's a mountain in our path. And suddenly we freak out. Right? We totally freak out. We get scared. We think, oh, but, but, but I had to go. Like, I had, I, I had to get over here. And now there's this mountain. And everything was fine. I was having a nice stroll in the park. And all of a sudden, there's this thing in my way. And we, we, we have fear, right? Like, we freak out. Um, here's the thing. Like, instead of this whole, like, oh, my God. <laughs> right? He's scared. Uh, <laughs> I told you I'm the worst artist. No, it's good. So here's the thing. Is we think this is a bad thing, right? We think, oh. But, but I, I'm having this, this, this fear reaction, but the reality is like that's normal. In fact, I would argue that 
if you have a giant insurmountable obstacle in your path, these huge hurdles, and you aren't a little bit afraid, if you aren't a little bit concerned about how you're going to get past it, mm -hmm. there might be something wrong with you. Or you might not have fully appreciated the, the momentous nature of the, the, of the thing that you have to tackle. Right. right. So here's the thing. We leverage the fear. Right? We use the fear. We use the fear to acknowledge what we're trying to accomplish. And there are these tactics that I've found uh, work for me and work for uh, people in the community I talk to and clients, everybody. This is it's all the same. Where, um, first of all, take a step back. Use that fear. Assess the risk. Right? First thing we do is we say, okay, well, maybe there's a little path around the mountain. I don't know. Is it treacherous? I don't know. But I can assess that. Did I even have to get here in the first place? Maybe being up here was fine. I don't know. Or maybe, right, maybe, I'm going to switch colors. We'll see if the red shows up. Maybe what's really going on is I assess the risk, and I've got some crazy volcano here, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I'm in the middle, not of a path in the park, but I'm in the middle of, a, like, a desert island, and there's sharks with, like, lasers <laughs> everywhere, okay? <laughs> like, I don't really know, I don't, but I have to assess the risk. I have no idea until I can sit back and say, all right, um, how bad is it really? In the moment, this seems terrible. But at least if I know what it is, maybe it is terrible. But if I know what it is, I can solve the problem. Right? Uh, the next thing is I'm on an island. Right? Let's assume for a moment that I really had to get here. And I'm really on some crazy island. I've got the sharks and there's a volcano. It's terrible. So uh, am I alone? Are there people with me? Like, where is everybody? Uh, you may feel like you're on a deserted island. You may think you're alone. But reality is, like, in my experience, you, you're probably not. Like, the things you're trying to tackle, uh, other people have tried to do these things, get through these things. There are people around you who are part of your community, right? So all of a sudden, if you really take a step back, let's, let's have him, like, he's starting to calm down again, okay? I'm gonna let the hair back down, make him bald again. And maybe there's another guy here. There's another guy here. They want to help. Like, they're here. They want to be part of the solution. You just got to find those people. You got to find the right people. And what you do is you start building relationships and you can kind of uh, find mentors, right? And again, it doesn't matter. Is this a personal thing, a professional thing? Is it I'm stuck on a desert island? You can find people who are there to help. And more importantly, not only can you find people who can help you, but I think it's just as important to go find people that you can help, right? Find mentors and find mentees or protégés, what have you, right? Find people that you can help out because even though maybe they're looking to you for help and you're the one who thinks you're stuck on a desert island, you still have um, you, know, you have people around you who, who are there to learn and be part of a shared experience with you. And it's through teaching and shared experiences that we all grow and learn how to do things better, right? So assess your risk, build relationships. What about <sighs> opportunity? The hardest thing to do, right? There's a cliche, you know, an opportunity knocks, open the door. When opportunity comes, what do we do about it? Right. So suppose that, um, you know, low tide. That was a sandbar that gets me right there. Or maybe, this would be really great, maybe a giant ship is out here. <laughs> I'm not going to try to draw cannons, but there's a boat. That's a boat, I swear. <laughs> All right. And maybe a ship rolls in. Here's the thing. If you're like me, you all know me, the first thing I'm going to do is start saying, oh, uh, well, <laughs> there's a boat. Is it going to the right place? Um, is it really taking me where I want to go? Uh, what if they're not nice? What if they don't like me? Oh, the, oh, the tide's rolled out. There's a sandbar I can walk across, but can the sharks actually get up here and get me? Um, is, is the tide going to roll back in while I'm halfway there? Like, is the Red Sea going to collapse? I don't know. And by the time I make a decision to say, yeah, I'm going to go for it, um, the opportunity's gone. Mm. Right? So yeah, assess your situation, but it's easy to, to become paralyzed, I think, by the same fears of overanalyzing the situation you're in. I do that all the time, right? It's a hard thing to learn to not do. And so um, I say that you need to be able to go out and kind of uh, snatch, snatch it when the opportunity is open, right? Like if the door opens, walk through, look around. It's okay. It doesn't slam close behind you. It may slam close before you walk in, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to slam close. It's going to slam close if you don't walk in. If you walk through the door, you can always take a look around. Test the water. If it's not good, go back. Send the smoke signal up to the ship, right? And try it. If it doesn't work, great, go back. If it does, move forward. Walk through doors. Go through opportunities, right? And the last thing, and I think in a lot of respects the most important thing, is uh, clarity of purpose, right? All these other things, th uh, these three things are all tied to that. 
I know you both have this in spades, right? Like we talk about so many things that we kn- a- and it's it's knowing where you want to get to, because all these things are hard. Right? I'm not saying it's easy, right? Uh, there's sharks with lasers, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a volcano erupting, right? It's not easy to remember to do these things every day, and it might take time. But if instead of just getting getting depressed, getting worried, it's hard. What if our guy came over here, you know, and he builds like a like a little telescope? As an astronomer, I should be able to make a better telescope than that. <laughs> um, so, but we build a telescope. And now every single day, our little guy needs to walk to that side of the island and look through that telescope and say, I see Disney World. That's where I'm trying to get. Remember that every single day. That's why, even though this is hard, I keep doing it. And develop that sort of clarity of purpose and know where it is you want to get to and where you need to be. So, um, again, actually assessing your risks, building relationships. Uh, walking through doors when opportunities present themselves and making sure you maintain clarity of purpose. I think those skills, uh, we use those every day as, as teachers, as mentors. Uh, we use those things at Arana with our clients. So I mean it's, it's an everyday thing. Uh, you develop those skills and you can get over any hurdle. Nice. So if somebody's brand new and walking into this, everything's insurmountable. Like it feels like at first, you're like there's this mountain of information. Well, yeah. well, we look at it as a great thing that we have it because we've been here a while. Like, look, documentation, it exists. Hallelujah. Right, right. But to a new person, they're like, oh my gosh, it's like a textbook that I did back in college. That's, there's so much stuff that's just overwhelming. So, I mean, what is the first step they can do? Like, it's, it's better to do something than be frozen, right? So what is the very first thing you would suggest? Well, so in a way, that's a good question. I mean, in a way, I sort of think that the, the last skill is also the first, right? So when I say you need to maintain your clarity of purpose and these other three things all build up to that, I think you need to figure out what that purpose is first, mm-hmm. right? You need to take the time to say, what is my goal? Where am I trying to get to? Because remember, when before we even had a volcano here, we had a guy just trying to get to a star, mm-hmm. right? And I think the first thing is yeah. figure out your goals. Where is it you want to be? Define that, right? If you figure out what that goal is, and it can change, right? Like it can move. Our goals change over time, just like the technology landscape changes, like the job market changes, like life changes. Okay. So I think the goal can change. But set your goals first. If you set your goals, then you can start finding the steps to build the things out. You can find the right mentors and mentees. Um, you can start assessing the problem and figuring out how difficult the problem is to, to, to tackle, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you, can, you can start handling all these things if you just know where it is you're trying to get to in the first place, which is sometimes the hardest step of all. Do you have any questions for him? I, th- I was going to say something about building a strategy, but he already kind of covered that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's basically what he said. For sure. Thank you for taking the time to explain yeah. this to us. It's so important that I guess we have the right mindset when we're overwhelmed. Right. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.